Hello guys, my name is Russian Badger, and I would like to start off by saying that I think we can all agree that Swedish technology is amazing. Like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with IKEA, but I fit all of the furniture in my entire home into a small, compact set of cardboard boxes that all slid into a Prius pretty nicely. That's that's pretty revolutionary to me, but even more revolutionary from the DICE developers here is I think it's it's not bulletproof glass it seems like bullet or anything proof glass because it keeps regenerating it's like I don't know if any kind of foreign military has gotten their hands on this yet but I think a lot of people would be interested in regenerative glass I, I mean I guess the bullets would still go through temporary I, I don't I don't know exactly what the military application would be but that is straight witchcraft alright DICE I don't know if glass should ever be able to be regenerative, but whatever you've discovered here, I'm sure you're gonna win some kind of Nobel Peace Prize for something. They give awards for that sort of thing, I'm absolutely certain. Now, I would like to fill you guys in on a few of the changes that are gonna be happening hopefully on Tuesday. Now, the reason that I say Tuesday is that DICE released a statement, you know their whole blog post about the patch that is going to change everything and possibly has Final Stand is coming out is targeted for release at the end of September. Now obviously, the last day of September is Tuesday. After Tuesday, there is no more September until obviously 2015. And obviously, also too, all of the patches that have come from DICE, they usually come on Tuesday mornings. That's usually when they, they update their servers, whether they're doing maintenance or they're releasing some kind of large patch. That's usually when they happen. So that's most likely when it's going to be, but I can't guarantee that. But I know for certain that in the very near future, a lot of things are going to be changing. Now, they have a whole list, you know, game modes are being overhauled, which includes Rush, Obliteration, CTF, nobody really plays CTF, but okay. Carrier Assault, and at least like Obliteration competitive sub-game mode. They've also totally improved all the sights, you know, with the whole firing animation, visual recoil is really being cut down. And there's also improved recoil for, you know when you have a coyote and you're looking outside on lockers and it's so bright you can't even see the center red dot in your reticle and it's very, very frustrating? Yeah, that, that tends to be very, very annoying. And come on, server, like we need double kill, triple kill, I don't need that spammed in chat, alright? That is, that is just annoying, alright? Nobody needs the halo sound. Despite the fact I would like the halo sound effects, I don't think we need it currently. And... I would like to just have another brief rundown before I get into the other details that are they, they are changing for the patch. I'd like to say there are a few things that I am most definitely going to miss. So allow me to clearly outline for you things that I am going to miss after this patch hits and we no longer have it. First thing, I'm going to miss ATVs sticking to ceilings like they're being ridden by Spider-Man. Yeah, I don't I don't know exactly how this guy did this. It's kind of something that it's just I'm writing it off as like wizardry or witchcraft, much like the regenerative glass from earlier. But he somehow spider man his ATV and was invincible while sticking on the ceiling. That's just dice physics at their finest. Now, I'm also going to miss the good kind of lag, because apparently they're making a whole lot of fixes to the lag and the quote-unquote netcode. Now, obviously, I don't like the bad kind of lag. The netcode lag that you get shot around corners, I think we can all agree is annoying. It's really annoying, but at the same time, there is good lag. Sometimes, you're just, I don't know, just frolicking about on Goldman Railway in your missile truck, and you're about to run over this recon, and you do, and then all of a sudden, you lag back in time, and then that single kill is somehow turned into a double Double kill, yet the, I, I'm okay with that kind of lag. Double so I'm going to miss the good kind of lag, but I'm not going to miss the whole netcode changes because obviously they're changing the netcode pretty heavily, and that's something that we're all kind of skeptical about whether or not they're actually going to fix it. I am also going to miss levitating soldiers. You know those... Sometimes you just find them on maps like Paracel Storm, like you're just floating in the air like there's some kind of religious figure that can walk on water. Yeah, that... I'm gonna miss that guy, and I'm also gonna miss Frictionless Guy. From what I played in CTE, Frictionless Guy apparently is not, he's, he, he's going away. Apparently they've somehow fixed him. He's, you know the guy that just floats around like he's, he's, he's stuck in some kind of frictionless environment and he can, he can jump up without even bending his knees like he's some kind of legendary LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Michael Jordan basketball player. That's, that's something that I'm also going to miss just because it's hilarious to look at. Something that I'm not going to miss is definitely the mines that stick below the ground. You know when you, you throw mines on maps like Siege of Shanghai and then all of a sudden they magically just disappeared and they can't... You can't see them, but they can still explode. So that's kind of unfair for anybody that is coming out of their spawn. I know placing mines outside of the spawn is not the most... 
morally acceptable thing to do in Battlefield, but uh, who needs morals when you're using slams, alright? Let's be real here. And one final thing, I'm definitely gonna miss running myself over with vehicles, alright? I'm gonna miss it, because I totally love it when somehow my vehicle stores all this pent-up velocity and then releases it back onto me. I... I don't get it. I, 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 re I really don't get it. I'm sorry, I just don't get it. And... That's that's all that I have to say about what I'm going to miss because I didn't want to focus on all the negatives I didn't want to just preach on about netcode and meow 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 So I just wanted to show you exactly what I thought I was going to miss and Beyond all that you should probably know that even the player movement is changing now I don't know how many of you have played CTE recently or how many of you have played even BF3 recently But they're making the player movement almost identical to Battlefield 3. It's not quite like a Counter-Strike situation where your FPS dug and I could dance all day, I could dance all day, try and hit me. It's not quite that drastic, but I would still say that it's significant enough that you'll notice a difference of... If you can pull off some kind of Night of Fire, Electric Slide, Waltz, Ballroom dance, most of the time you can win close range engagements just because you, you know a certain technique of dancing or just sort of tiptoeing around the guy's bullets, and that's, that's another change that you're definitely going to notice. The HUD clarification that I like to make is that everything is so customizable now, it's almost too customizable. I know that that might sound a little bit odd to some of you, because you, you could never have too much customization, Badger, but the minimap can become absolutely gigantic. Like, just look at that. The, the minimap can become absolutely gigantic if you wanted to, if you put it to 200%. But everything can be customized really now in terms of like your HUD and the opacity and the size of certain objects on your screen so all of that is I welcome it with open arms but at the same time I think a lot of you are gonna be just absolutely overwhelmed with the amount of customization that you have now the revive mechanic is also changing they're changing what comes up on your HUD like a, a little bit of a countdown as to exactly when a guy's gonna his revive or opportunity of revive window is going to go away so I totally welcome that with open arms and there's also a little beep once your paddles are fully charged up that's another great feature Obviously the netcode is going to be changed. We'll, we'll see if that is actually going to be changed. I think a lot of that is really out of DICE's hands. It's all in the, the game engine that you can't really inherently change all that much. But we'll see what happens. I'm a little skeptical, I'm a little pessimistic, but even this guy. I didn't understand this helicopter pilot. He was flying low the entire time. It's like, why guy? Why? I feel bad for anybody that was ever in that helicopter because it's kind of not their fault. But at the same time, if you know your helicopter pilot's that bad, I don't know if I would ever want to stay in that particular vehicle for very long. There's also going to be in the new new patch weapon attachment changes, so the heavy barrel is a little bit less effective. I mean, I, I know a lot of you don't really use heavy barrel. It's kind of just a compensator. Well, it's either compensator, flash hider, or muzzle brake most of the time. The muzzle brake, I don't really know if it's a buffer and nerf, and this was another set of just weird, uh, like, opportunistic lag that didn't... Uh, I'm a little bit sad that I didn't get any kind of double kill out of it like I did earlier in the other set of lag, but I'm not really sure if it's a nerf to the muzzle break because they said both its positives and its negatives have been reduced. So, well, it remains to be seen whether that's actually going to be a buff or a nerf, but it sounds like it's going to be another nerf. And come on, guy! that's a, Is that the same dude in the same helicopter? Like, hovering that low is always just... Ugh, that's... <laughs> I feel so sorry for your teammates, man. I feel so sorry for your teammate. But that's basically all the major weapon changes in terms of attachments. So the laser sight's getting a bit of a buff, the heavy barrel's getting a bit of a nerf, and the muzzle brake is just changing. We don't quite know if that's really positive or negative yet. And obviously damage models are going to change, like the Deagle's going to get nerfed, the MPX is going to get nerfed, but I think you guys already know which weapons are overpowered and which ones are underpowered and which ones are just going to change in general. But just expect changes to certain weapons. That's, that's pretty customary. Now before I go, I'd like to thank the sponsors of today's video, which is Opinion Outpost. They're a research company that rewards users with cash, Amazon gift cards, and iTunes gift cards in exchange for sharing their opinions on various topics such as food, TV, movies, new products, and even politics if you want to give your opinion on that. It's free to join them, and they even have a $10,000 quarterly prize drawing for active members where each time you participate in a survey, you receive an entry, and there's no limit on the number of entries you can earn. So if that sounds like something that you're interested, I will leave a link at the top of the description. Be sure to check them out and show them some love for sponsoring today's video. Now, 
For your bonus clip, I'm going to show you, I don't know if I've ever killed or blown up three vehicles in this rapid succession before, but it kind of blew my mind that I could actually accomplish something like this in Battlefield, knowing how much of a scrub, just absolute nubcake player I am. But I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy the bonus clip. I will see you guys next time. Auf Wiedersehen und bis bald und later.